Dramedy Part 1. There's quite a bit of dramedies in his filmography, so this is Part 1. The World According to Garp. This is a movie I would not watch if, you know, I wanted to watch something. I very much prefer a horror movie, but the point of this, of me going through filmographies, is broaden my taste or just experience other filmographies aside from superhero horror. Just watch and experience different things, and this movie does that for me because I would not watch this movie if I didn't force myself to go through a filmography. This movie is just about life, essentially, like why there are traditions, why they exist why they're kind of ridiculous being an artist the point of it you don't make much money from it if you're like not really into the whole business stuff politics stuff with his mom death in general like there's a lot of things going on with this movie it all kind of fits together the very first scene is pretty much the tone of mostly this movie of robert Williams' mother having him as a little baby telling her parents being like yeah you know i got pregnant i don't want to be married why well i just don't want to her parents are very traditional like get married have kids have house and fence and dogs and cats right and she's like no you know what i don't want to want to have this kid and the father died and then her parents asked well which side is he on well i don't care about which side and then she proceeds to tell them yelling outside i got pregnant because i think she was like riding him essentially and then the mother drops dead faints the father can't hear because he's old as fuck now just to set the tone and what this movie is about there's even this one animated bit like little robert williams drawing and this drawing comes to life in an animated form just for that one bit i thought that was really fun just putting all that effort into one scene essentially and then death gets brought up very early on to him at a young age where you know death just happens it is a guaranteed thing and hopefully you spend your life not being stressed out being happy essentially and so death is brought up once again when his mom is at a rally about like something political and then this anti-person just shoots and kills her sucks but then very later on as well someone comes into the wrestling room and shoots robert williams i was like okay this is not gonna happen right and it happens he survives in a helicopter with his wife seeing that he's happy because he's flying once again just as he did when he was little and then the whole wrestling stuff why is that there which is contrast to why he wants to become an artist he talks a lot about why being an artist is fun but it's also like what's the point of it you have to have your one shot essentially to become a well-known artist you know whether it's a song or a painting or i don't know like a youtube video an art form doesn't know what to do with it and so wrestling is his backup because he was a really good wrestler back in high school he went to the wrestling rooms when he was a little kid and so the movie ends with him just being a coach for wrestling because that's like a guaranteed like paycheck and just sometimes you run into to a roadblock i'm not having fun or, or there's no meaning to it there's no real value to it this movie just has like again tradition politics artist stuff writing just like again life essentially this movie is about life robert williams has like a family he has a child and a wife and whatnot and so just seeing his life grow up according to his pov was a lot of fun the Fisher King. I kind of forgot about this movie. And if I'm being honest, I don't remember much from it. One thing I do remember though is acceptance. Robert Williams is a homeless man. He saves Jack, who is doing much better than Robert Williams, but he also doesn't seem to be happy. This movie creates bonds between a homeless man and a man that's doing well off. And then in the end, this guy Jack learns to just accept Robert Williams despite not being well off, very much dirty, and being homeless. And then if I remember correctly, his wife doesn't accept him, I think. And then I guess the rest of society but that's all i remember which is an issue i should know a lot more I'm trying to remember oh yeah there's those kids that tries to mug jack and then a bunch of homeless people save him and then that backfires because those kids come back to beat up robin williams without anyone's help because he has no one really but yeah i should probably know more about this movie it is a good movie again i think the main thing i do remember is acceptance everything else is like i remember it right yeah but it's good this is all me i just forgot about a lot of it because i watched it a long ass time ago Mrs. Doubtfire. So this is the movie that I knew the most about. If I were to like have a conversation or mention Robin Williams, Mrs. Doubtfire somehow gets mentioned as one of his better movies and I can definitely see why. This is a very wholesome, heartfelt movie about a father wanting to make his kids happy and just laugh, which is Robert Williams essentially just wanting to make people laugh their lives a lot more better just by laughing. Gets a divorce by his wife because they have a house, comes in and kids are just like having fun essentially. The house is messy, yes, and this isn't the way to, you know, know probably raise them but they're having fun they're being kids right and robert williams just wants to make them laugh and she just doesn't like that she isn't done with that so she wants a divorce and so you know it just isn't just that it's probably years of like stop doing this please don't and so they get a divorce however robert williams wants to be around his kids and his kids miss him because he's a lot of fun and he has a plan to dress up as an old nanny which i thought was gonna either look goofy or be good it was a bit of both they actually put on prosthetics like if i were to see this person i wouldn't even think for a second that it's a person trying to 
be someone else. And so he has to live this lie, this facade of like, as a nanny, who has fun essentially. He even has to lie to his like, landlord? There's even one point where he has to come home as a nanny, switch costumes quickly, and then switch back on and be like, hey, I'm a nanny. Hey, it's Robert Williams, back to Robin, you know? So he has to lie to not only his wife, but his kids and like everyone else around him that isn't already helping him. And then also all of the funny bits with him and his kids in the house, like the whole fire thing and just all that's all fun. The wife eventually finds out instead of, you know, being like, oh, get away and whatnot. She realizes that, you know what? You're making the kids happy. They're not happy when you're not around. She still wants a divorce. She doesn't want to be with them, but maybe you could be with them for like a week or two or whatever, you know, like co-parenting. And so in the end, they're able to be like, okay, get in the car and we're going to have some family fun time. So yeah, like Mrs. Doubtfire, I could definitely see why it is in his top filmography. Like it's just, again, very wholesome, making people laugh. I feel like that's the whole point of him essentially. By this point, I've watched, I think 10 or 12 of his movies. And so far I can tell that he just wants to make people happy and laugh. That's really it. And that's what Mrs. Doubtfire is being human i think i like the idea and concept of this movie more than the actual movie not to say that this isn't a good movie it is a good movie i do like it but i feel like i got it in the very first two eras essentially about being away from your family and in the end being with them not going because of a war or being taken away or whatever you know so robert williams is playing the same character but in five different eras there's the caveman era the rome the renaissance scottish crusader and present day new york and so throughout these five different lives find out that you know they're all kind of connected in terms of the themes and what's going on of being away from his family there are probably other things that i'm missing but the main takeaway the way that it starts and ends family essentially in the caveman era his family gets taken away from him and the way to i guess deal with that is him throwing rocks at them being like making all these noises and whatnot just throwing rocks which was one sad but also not supposed to be funny but i laughed because it just seemed kind of ridiculous caveman era looking back on it it was just so much harder caveman like no shoes whatsoever it seems a bit rough in the rome era he apparently he has to kill himself with this friend it sounds ridiculous and dumb just thinking about it being like wait what why are you doing this you don't have to but he has to and so he just does but even back then like there's like these buildings and whatnot there's these traditions and rules you have to follow and it seems like you're not free there's like a hierarchy in it the scottish crusader thing i kind of forgot about why well, i think he falls in love but isn't accepted or something okay yeah i forgot about this one thought i remembered but anyways it's still kind of the same like you know being away trying to fall in love and then all these people that he meets in the past they're in the present as well they all come in later on the renaissance era forgot about man you know what maybe this scottish era and renaissance era, i forgot about anyways forgot about those two but then the present day in new york an apartment sees all the people in the past all kind of like not connected to his actual now life but just kind of like again being away family and not being alone and not following these ridiculous like rules in rome or something something like that the movie ends with him with his family just being happy essentially the only issue is i got that from like the first two so it's like same thing over and over again for like three more times and it was like okay i get it can this movie end already and so because of that i don't like it quite as much but that's the thing is a good movie though it's a very neat idea it is executed well it's just kind of redundant after a while jack so i get what this movie's trying to do like robert williams is playing a kid that has an adult body who's like 10 years old but looks like an adult this can go one or two ways well or not well but just kind of fine which is what i thought it was fine or kind of like is this like offensive or kind of dumb and i don't know i didn't feel that way it was more like okay i get what the premise is you kind of feel bad for this kid or robert williams kind of treat him differently in a way because it looks like an adult but it's not really an adult and i think there's even one point hold on i think one of the kids his mother tries to hit on him that was a very awkward scene i don't know if this was supposed to be funny or terrifying or it was like that's kind of awkward oh yeah bill cosby's in this movie yeah he's um he's checking up on robin william j-lo jennifer lopez herself who's a teacher in this movie who by the way she looks the same age that she did back in 1990 something what was the day of this movie 93 i don't know she looks the same clearly she is a bit younger but still it's like what are you doing man are you like gluing other people's skin on like and then eventually you can only prevent this issue for so long but he goes to jail because he does something wrong and police they're like they don't know that this is a kid they just see that he's a grown full adult they have to arrest him he gets arrested and mother comes back try to get him back and so i do like that the whole like real life issues of having a kid that's 10 but looks like an adult having to be treated differently and then eventually at the end he graduates he finally gets his like graduation thing and it ends on a very happy note and so yeah that's essentially the whole movie like it's okay it's fine you know robert 
Williams does a good job at being a 10 year old essentially. And finally, Patch Adam. This might be my favorite film of his so far. It's just heartwarming. And again, I don't wanna keep saying this, but Robert Williams trying to make people's lives better and happier by making them laugh. He's in a medical school, I think, and there's patients in hospitals and whatnot. And so the typical like, hey, I'm a doctor, I'm serious, breaking news, you're not gonna make it or whatnot. And so instead of doing that, you know what? Let me just try to make these people laugh, especially that scene with the kids with cancer. And like, you kind of know that they're not gonna make it. And so in his last effort, he's like, you know what? I'm gonna make them laugh before they go away. Make them laugh while they're still living in here. And then he starts questioning his system as to why a patient and a doctor, they don't have like a really close relationship just in terms of making them happy, making them laugh. You know, not like an actual like couple or whatever, but just like, you know, they're in bed mostly. They're probably stressed out thinking, am I gonna make it and whatnot? And so distract them from that, make them laugh. The movie is just like, stop taking life seriously. Just laugh, laugh at something, you know? And I love that. And then while also trying to fight the system, he's also trying to convince this character named Karen who who's very not optimistic, very jaded and just kind of down. Being like, oh, shut up. Stop trying to make people laugh, you clown and whatever. And then there's this great scene of him being like, okay, put on this like clown nose and see if you laugh. Make sure you put it on, gets a mirror. Didn't tell her that, but laughs. These two eventually end up as a couple. She like kind of needs him because he's the polar opposite of her. She's very, I don't want to say negative, but again, very, I guess, very pessimistic on life. But then that eventually has to stop as well where she's murdered by an ex or just a guy that she knows. That obviously, you know, isn't a laughing matter sometimes laughter can just hide and push away the pain that you have as well it's not all okay maybe it's not always good to laugh at all things but just having a good time and just being able to have a laugh mostly i feel like is a lot better than being super serious and stressful and whatnot in the end he's in a court for fraudulent stuff having like an actual like med scholarship or something like that but then also he gives that really good speech to end off the movie and so i really like patch item i think it's gonna be like top 10 movie for me because you know just laugh and that was it for Dramedy Part 1 with Robert Williams. Patch Adams is my favorite film so far. It's really good. Mrs. Doubtfire is pretty good as well. Jack was kind of okay. Being human, neat little idea, but just good. I liked it well enough. So yeah, that is it for me. This has been The Road So Far, and thank you for watching.